Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Jilin Shirley Lee. I'm an assistant professor and the laboratory director at Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on Therapeutic Drug Monitoring, Chemotherapeutic Agents. Therapeutic Drug Monitoring, briefly called TDM, offers clinicians better management of patients and potential improvement of patient quality of life through optimizing dose, supporting compliance, and minimizing toxicity. The practice of TDM has been expanded and enhanced by rapid sensitive and specific analytical techniques for a wide variety of the therapeutic agents. The best candidate drugs for TDM are those meeting one or more of the following criteria. A narrow therapeutic index used for long-term therapy, correlation between serum concentration and the clinical response, wide inter-individual or intra-individual variability in pharmacokinetics, absence of a biomarker associated with therapeutic outcome or administered with other potentially interacting compounds. In practice, TDM is performed for drug administered multiple times over many days, weeks, or even years. Usually, doses are administered before the preceding dose has been completely eliminated. As shown in this figure, drugs administered at regular intervals will accumulate to a point termed steady state, which means the amount of drug entering the systemic circulation is in balance with the amount being eliminated. Assuming doses are given at each half-life, a drug with first-order kinetics will require three to five doses to approach steady state concentrations. Similarly, at the end of therapy, Five to seven half-lives after the last dose must pass for more than 95% of the steady-state concentration to be eliminated. The simplest and the most direct route of administering a drug is intravenous delivery, because infusion places a complete dose of a compound into the circulation. However, practically, and for reasons of patient performance, Drugs can be delivered by alternate ways. The common way is oral administration. Oral dosing differs from intravenous due to the drug required to pass from the gastrointestinal tract into the vascular system. This process is known as absorption. The ability of absorption is determined by the rate and extent of drug absorption, the nature of the drug itself, for example, solubility and the pKa, the formulation matrix and the physiologic environment, for example, gastrointestinal motility. The distribution of drugs extensively depends on lipophilicity. They facilitate passage through cell membranes. Many drugs bind to one or more plasma proteins, mostly albumin, globulins, such as alpha-1 acid glycoproteins and lipoproteins. In general, Acidic drugs associate primarily with albumin, while basic drugs bind globulins and lipoproteins. An equilibrium between the amount of drug is protein bound and the free drug, which means non bound to protein. Free drug is more readily accessible to cell membranes, drug receptors, and the elimination mechanisms. So, the free fraction is considered the active component of the drug responsible for its biological effects. Metabolism is typically thought to enhance excretion of drugs, where endogenous and exogenous compounds are converted to more polar products to increase water solubility. Drugs can be metabolized by oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, hydration, conjugation, condensation, or isomerization. Excretion or elimination is the final removal of drugs from the body. This includes secretion into sweat, breasts, and breast milk, 
incorporation into hair and the nails, or even crossing the placenta into the fetal bloodstream. However, the most common ways of drug elimination is excretion into urine or stool, depending on the water solubility of the compound. The rate of elimination into urine can be estimated using the glomerular filtration rate. Serum drug concentrations are useful in many stages of treatment. Initial selection and dosing of a drug may be guided by TDM, particularly if wide interpatient variability in absorption, metabolism, or other parameters of drug disposition is noted. Without measuring drug concentrations, it is difficult to discern which patients respond poorly to therapeutic concentrations of a particular drug and which ones simply are not within the therapeutic range. Particularly, population pharmacokinetics often does not adequately address compatibility or drug interactions, so TDM is necessary for this patient. TDM analysis includes many of the same concerns as other areas of clinical chemistry. The need for accurate, reproducible methods, the requirement for quality assurance and the proficiency testing programs, and the necessity of establishing target ranges. A wide variety of analytical techniques are available to facilitate TDM, including numerous amino acid methods such as enzyme multiplied amino acid technique, EMIT, fluorescent polarization amino acid, FPIA, cloned enzyme donor amino acid, CEDIA, and the chromatographic techniques such as gas chromatography mass spectrometry, GCMS, liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, LCMS, and high-performance liquid chromatography, ultraviolet, HPLC-UV. Immunoassays provide rapid results and ready automation. Chromatography techniques improve specificity and the limits of detection, although at a lower throughput. Unfortunately, commercial immunoassays are not available for many of the newer generation drugs. LCMSMS is progressively replacing other HPLC-based methods. It displays greater selectivity and fewer analytical interferences, allowing development of multi-analyte assays with higher support and less influence from metabolites or other potential co-eluting compounds. The choice of analytical method typically depends on the availability of resources and the clinical demand for turnaround time. Biosofen is a chemotherapeutic drug that inhibits the growth of malignant cells by alkylating DNA. Biosofen is currently used in hematopoietic stem cell transplant preparative regimen to maximize an anti-tumor effect. In addition, biosofen is also used to treat malignant and non-malignant bone marrow disorders, such as acute and chronic leukemias, myelodysplastic syndrome, beta thalassemia major, polycythemia viral, and sickle cell anemia. Biosofen pharmacokinetics is affected by age, weight, disease status, hepatic function, and drug interactions. The optical range of circuitic area under the plasma concentration versus time curve AUC for standard doses biosofen is 900 to 1350 micromolar minute per liter. Patients with biosofen concentrations below the circuitic range are thought of as having an increased risk of relapse as well as of rejection. Conversely, Patients with plasma concentrations greater than 1,500 micromolar minute per liter have an increased risk of severe treatment-related toxicity. Biosofen is metabolized through both cytochrome P450 isoenzymes, primarily CYP3A4, and conjugation with glutathione by glutathione S transferase. Slowed biosofen clearance could be anticipated with co-administration of a CYP3A4 inhibitor or a competitive substrate. 
Fluconazole is known to inhibit the drug metabolizing enzyme CYP3A4. So it inhibits butyrophone metabolism and it delays its clearance. Mesotrexate inhibits DNA synthesis by decreasing the availability of pyrimidine nucleotides. Mesotrexate has proved useful in the management of acute lymphoblastic leukemia in children. Management of choroidal carcinoma and related tuberoplastic tumors in women. Management of carcinomas of the breast, tongue, pharynx, and testes. Maintenance of remission of leukemia. And the treatment of severe debilitating psoriasis. High dose mesotrexate administration followed by leucovarin rescue is effective in treatment of carcinoma of the lung and osteogenic sarcoma. Mesotrexate is a non specific cytotoxin, and the prolongation of blood concentrations are appropriate to killing tumor cells. It may lead to severe unwanted cytotoxic effects such as myelosuppression gastrointestinal mucositis, and hepatic cirrhosis. Serum concentrations of mesotrexate are commonly monitored during high-dose therapy to identify the time at which active intervention by leucovarin rescue should be initiated. Criteria for serum concentrations is indicative for potential for toxicity after single bolus high-dose therapy as shown in the table. Mesotrexate concentration greater than 10 micromolar per liter 24 hours after dose. Mesotrexate concentration greater than 1 micromolar per liter 48 hours after dose. Mesotrexate concentration greater than 0.1 micromolar per liter 72 hours after dose. Characteristically, serum concentrations are monitored at 24, 48, and 72 hours after a single dose and the leucovarin is administered when mesotrexate concentrations are inappropriate high for a post-dose phase. The route of elimination of mesotrexate is primarily renal excretion. During a period of high serum concentrations, particular attention must be paid to maintaining output of a large volume of alkaline urine. The pKa of mesotrexate is 5.5. So small decreases in urine pH result in significant reduction in its solubility. Keeping urine pH alkaline diminishes the risk of intratubular precipitation of the drug and obstructive nephropathy during the treatment period. So monitoring serum concentration provides the basic ideas for decisions related to timing of initiation and the continuance of leucovarin treatment and for management of urine pH. Low-dose mesotrexate is used to manage rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, psoriasis, or inflammatory or bowel disease. It's not typically monitored because analytical methods are not sensitive enough to monitor once weekly dosing and also because mesotrexate concentrations have not been shown to correlate well with disease control. The side effect profile of mesotrexate varies markedly according to the dose. Regimens containing mesotrexate are classified as high, intermediate, or low dose. Most clinicians reserve the term high-dose mesotrexate for doses greater than or equal to 500 mg per square meter and require a two- or three-day period of multiple leucovarin doses to terminate the toxic effect of mesotrexate, which is called leucovarin rescue. Leucovarin is n 5 formatidylhydrofolate the product of dihydrofolate reductase. Leucovarin rescue is critical in cases in which it's necessary to administer high doses of mesotrexate to individuals with tumors that do not respond to normal doses of this drug. In such cases, leucovarin is given 18 to 36 hours after the initial mesotrexate doses, while serum levels of mesotrexate are monitored. In addition, leucovarin should immediately be administered to a patient receiving low-dose mesotrexate when mesotrexate overdose is suspected. 
Serum Massachusetts levels should be monitored during this time. Toxicity of Massachusetts can also be treated using continuous flow hemodialysis. Alternatively, intravenous infusion of carboxypeptidase G2, a Massachusetts cleaving enzyme, results in rapid clearing of the drug. Thank you for joining me on this poll all about the medicine on therapeutic drug monitoring, chemotherapeutic agents. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.